two weeks ago we had a service that's we had a lot of a lot of quiet time and we encouraged ourselves to speak up I thought after both of these brothers sat down we should encourage ourselves to sit and think about what we just heard for a long time actually forever that's what it's about I mean uh, Paul Paul talked about both brothers and I sure this has been on all of our hearts that this is a big subject we could talk about it for many services it's because it talks about our personal relationship with our Lord and Savior and, it, and to put it into the right perspective it's not just a personal relationship it's a saving relationship that's been my thought I mean we can we can take every exhortation that's been given here and try to do it better and we can just fall flat if there's not God himself making us a new creature and that's what we believe I mean I, it's amazing how the thoughts I had lined up with some things that have already been said. Some of the choruses that reminded me, you know, that God can do this. You know, He can, He can change my prayer. All week has been, we, we have, I knew we were going to have good words come forth. My prayer is that lives be impacted and changed. Amen. That's always my prayer. But especially when you really sense that there's something going to be spoke to hearts, that should be our prayer. I'll say one other thing about what Ravi and Robbie Zacharias, as instructor, should have said, he could have also have said, don't you become courting my daughter then. <laughs> Think about it. I'm ser seriously, if you ain't willing to work till you die, then you ain't fit for, a, for my godly daughter. And I hope that that's all of us men and all you ladies and that that's the way we feel. And I hope that us young people believe that's our protection. It's somebody that we're going to ask for advice feels that way because that's, that's the truth. I thought of a song that goes along with, the, that makes the message here. I don't like to sing this, but the, it was enough. Yeah. Was the blood that was shed enough to change my life? Was the blood that was shed enough to make me say, I'm not I'm nothing, I'm unworthy, but I, I desire that at the end of my life, somebody, my wife, my sons and my daughters, and my brothers and my sisters say, they saw something in me that was honoring the words that have come forth here this morning. Does it, is, is that what it was? Something inside of me. Jim looked up the word uh, reconcile in the dictionary. I looked up the word respect. Because it was, came clear to me when I was thinking, you know, husbands and wives need to respect each other. If they did, in the world or in the church, if they did, they really wouldn't be having a lot of problems. I mean, they might be dying and going to hell if they're not Christians. But they'd probably be getting along real good if they respected each other. If there was something about the way they were and the lives they were living that they both respected each other, they'd be rocking and rolling along real good. The simple dictionary definition was respect for the honor manifested toward uh, something worthy. I don't really, really think that's a very uh, in-depth definition, so I, I, I wrote my own. <laughs> and that's uh, respect is the honor, and it goes, I wrote it for today, not for uh, my dictionary that I'm writing. Uh, <laughs> It's honor manifested towards one who appreciates fully that God has declared him worthy and sees him worthy because of the blood of Christ. Okay? And, and think about what that would mean. If I live my life because I believe I'm only worthy because of what Christ did for me, then I'm worthy of someone else's respect. That's what I'm talking about. That's salvation. That's a real, living, active salvation, not a religious declaration or anything. That's, that's when God, if my life, if every action I make when I walk is dependent upon me being sensitive to the fact that I'm unworthy, only worthy of wrath, but that God has spared me. And if that influences my decisions, I will be right in the workplace and in the home. And that's, 
except when we're sleeping. There's nothing else, really. Think about it. it, it that's what needs to motivate us. If it's just lining up to rule, if, if better standards have been presented and we uh, live up to them, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's not what has nothing to do with what any of the men have said so far today. It's a new heart. Just like we heard, you know, what was the take-home message from Brother Un? He's talking about a living God. We're talking here about a new and living heart that drives us to be different than the way we were before. And it'll be worked out. We don't want to mean, we don't have time today to talk about everything. Praise God, because it's God's order and God working in hearts is worthy for us to talk about forever. But it will show. It won't just be words. It won't be a sermon. It'll be a new, new creatures walking this earth. I thought about the movie Fireproof, too. Paul, it's interesting that Paul, something came back. You know, when that man who was uh, failing miserably to be a good husband to his wife, the fireman, when his godly father became an influence to him to try to cause him to do different, he gave him that book, The Love Dare, and told him to do this for 40 days. Well, how did he start out doing that? Just do it to do it, you know. Something in him was pricked to maybe, well, I guess I should try to save my marriage, so I guess I'll do this. But wasn't there somewhere along the way where something changed on the inside? That's what we're talking about here. That's what we're talking about. You know, and then when it was all over, I mean, it was real. And that what a woman says, you know, I, I, I want what you got. I want what you got on the inside. And that's what I'm talking about. If, if a man has something on the inside that his wife wants, She'll be submissive, like Paul said, and they'll be, they'll be right. If he has something on the inside that, that is Jesus Christ that somebody wants, his children will, will want it too. And it might take faith to believe that, but we have to, because we can't be faithless, because that's what we're talking about is building ourselves, building each other up in the faith. I got a, some scriptures here that go along with this, and... I didn't even hardly read Ephesians 5 this week. Figured somebody else would. You know. But uh, just read the first couple of verses of Ephesians 4 real quick. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Walk worthy of the calling with which we're called. There's different levels here if we zoom in and out a little bit. It's not just that we're called to be good husbands in light of what we're saying here, but we've been called by God to represent Him. He didn't have to save any of us, especially me, I'll just say that, but He did. He called me to manifest thankfulness, gratitude, and appreciation for the blood that he shed. It, was it enough? Was it enough to satisfy me, make me a difference? Then, then that, if you're satisfied with what God did for us, us men, then we don't have to prove we're men out there anywhere. That makes it a lot easier to worry about our wives and our children if we're satisfied with who we are and where we're going and what God's going to do for us and we can trust Him. And I'll just throw this in here right now. Paul mentioned uh, uh, raising, uh, raising children. That's one of our responsibilities is to raise children that know how to respect authority so that someday God can touch them. And I'll just add, it's more than just having hope that someday they'll grow, outgrow screaming in church. By, the, by, um, by some miracle. It's, it's having a belief that God can change their hearts and teach them to be humble and submissive too. And knowing it's our part of our job is to help make that happen by honoring what the Word says. Just threw that in, but I want to add the other type of practical subjects are, are maybe, uh, you know, that thus men have a burden in their heart, and that is giving back to God what, what, what He's given to us. You know, we say we need a teaching on tithing, 
because people are untaught. But it's more than that. We need a teaching on a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, and we're starting that lifelong relationship of teaching here today because that's what it's all about. I mean, what greater trust should a woman have if her husband tells her it ain't about the money, honey, it's about trust in God? We can give to God. We can live in a smaller house. We can live with an older car. We can trust God. We can trust God because he saved us. I believe that. Do you believe that? Let's, let's grow in our faith together in the Lord. That's what, and a man, it's a man's responsibility to have more courage to say that. He bears, us men bear the burden of, of paying the bills. That's the way God ordered it, you know. And, and of being strong for the wife, you know. To take the, take the bullet or take the first hit or whatever. That's our job, you know. But we need to minister to the wife that we're not afraid to do that. And that we're well able to trust our God with, our, with the future of our family. That, and that's what I'll turn the tables. Women, you need to believe that or you're a worldly woman. And we're encouraging you by God's grace to be a godly woman. You know, we can't require you to submit. We can, we can encourage you and exhort you to be a godly woman. And you need to have faith too. What a wonderful thing when, a, when men and women, that's my, that's my whole main thought. I could read scriptures all day. I got them written down. But my main thought is that uh, where none of us are perfect, but wherever we're at in our godly walk, that we raise up our mate a little higher. Yes. And that our mate, because of that, they'll be strengthened and they can raise the other one up a little higher. What a blessing. What an honor, what honor in God. You know, in, uh, in Ephesians 5, it says, you know, I'm, not, I'm just going to mention it. We're talked about, you know, submission. If you read the whole chapter there, there's a sequence. And, and, and First Peter, is where I'm going to go next, is the, is the same thing. We can't just decide to be a worldly person but submit to my husband because it makes life easier. You need to have submission on the inside. That's the saving relationship of a woman that's going to make a marriage work. And, and he, he spells that out. Yeah, Paul does and Peter does you know and it says submit to one another he's referring to the body there in the fear of God if we don't have a fear of God we'll only submit when we finally agree the other person's bigger than us and it's to our best advantage that's not what we're talking about I think that's clear but we're going to say it again and, and let it sink in we're to submit to uh, government we're to submit to our boss we're just because we're just because we've been made submissive. It's part of the new creature because we have a vision. And I'll say this: if if a man can't be submissive to his boss, and uh, and he's courting a young woman, she needs to be careful because it means he ain't submissive on the inside. If a man is stingy, a woman needs to be careful before she'd marry him. Because like Brother Thomas would say, you know, someday he ain't going to look so good as he does, you know. We need to get honest here. We're talking, about what's on the, we're talking about what's on the inside here. We need to get back to reality here. And this, this applies. This applies to mindsets that are in this room. And mindsets that we got to believe God can wipe the slate clean and start with a new vision. I have that faith. And it's not just a faith that God can tweak us. Oh, yeah, I think I need that God can open up our eyes to a new and better life. Uh, in Ephesians, I'll read Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Be imitators of God, dear children. You know, that's... The, the, what we're talking about on the inside here is God wants to is conforming us. And if we go to First Peter a minute, uh, the end of chapter two. In 
Everybody wants to be conformed to the image of Jesus. We all say that. We sing songs about it and talk to it. Leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. Now we get to the part that really applies to, to our saving relationship with him that will help us be, be what we need, be the spouses we need to be. He did not threaten but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Was it enough? Was it enough that by his stripes we were healed? Is that everything to us? Can it be? For a new creature it can be. That sounds so childlike, so religious. But it's real. It's real. What do we have on a sign out front? Now, are we content with what he did for us? And is it more than that? Contempt is not just a happy feeling. It's part of our new nature. I mean, that's what makes everything work, is what we're talking about. And it'll show. Your spouse will know, you'll know, we'll know, the brothers will know. You were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. That submission comes from knowing what he did in, on the inside. Then it goes on to talk about the practical stuff here. As he had been talking about he says, likewise, be submissive, because he's been talking here in, in 1 Peter chapter 2 about being submissive to government and employers. But like, women, be submissive. This is the essence. This is what I've been talking about. Be submissive to your own husbands, that even as some do not obey the word. I'm talking about all levels of obedience here. And some, some people say it might mean uh, that are lost, but it, it could just be weak. That without a word, they may be one by the conduct of their wives, when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. That's, that's who we are. This can, this can go, if you read verse 7 and go back to verse 1, this gets to be non-gender, if you think about it for a minute. Do not, let, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging of the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel, for example. That could, you could say things about men's outward appearance there too. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. You know, and we get that because we're a new creature on the inside. Not because we go to a class that says, if you do this, your husband will love you better or your wife will love you better. It's because it's something different on the inside. God, if we don't have a humble and gentle spirit that God made and we don't, aren't that way because it was enough, and we're satisfied with the fact that we have a saving relationship with him. And this life is a vapor. And we're going to go to heaven someday. And it could be tomorrow. And it's for eternity. And if that's not more important to us than anything we can get here by satisfying our flesh, you know, that's what it's all. That's, that's the new person on the inside. For in this manner in former times, holy women who trusted in God and adorned themselves being submissive to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham. We, we read that. But then husbands, likewise, and the same thing That's what it means to me. Likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Do we believe that? But Paul painted a perfect picture of a husband and wife coming home and encouraging another to the Lord. What a simple way to look at it. Are we, do we really believe, do we look at our spouses as heirs together of the grace of life? And do I look at my sons or my daughters? Heirs together. You're the next generation. We are heirs together for eternity. This life is a vapor. If, we're, if we've been made new, God is, when God tells you that he saves you and he makes you new, he reveals to you that there's a heaven and a hell and he is sparing you from hell. And the rest of your life on this earth is part of the process of him making you, right. making you more appreciative of his grace. That he be glorified by someone that says, I trust my God. I trust my God. I'm, I'm not the same as I was before. 
heirs together of the grace of life. That, that's pretty much the thoughts that were, that were on my heart that uh, go on here. But I agree with the other men. If we think about this as part of our saving relationship with Jesus Christ, this applies to every possible service we could have. And we'll take this back two weeks. That should make us have something to say. It does. We have been so blessed. We can either give a testimony that we see God working, or we can encourage each other about, about how good God is. We are so honored that God chose us, pulled us out of the, the, the slave market, and changed us. How can we not appreciate Him and live for Him in return? And, you know, in one sense, the way, we, the way it shows our relationship with our husbands and wives is just a demonstration of that for the whole world to see. It's not in a vacuum. God does not, in this day and age, at this hour, I don't believe we should ever walk around believing that we can keep a lousy relationship hidden. We are stupid if we feel, believe that. It shows. It shows. And I'll just say, you know, I've been... I've been in a position to, I won't say help or counsel couples for a long, long time, for many years. I'll say I've been in a position where uh, couples' relationships have been discussed with the men in our presence. You know, that's the best way to put it. And I get, one way I always look at it is we're talking here about exactly what I said. Somebody in the relationship needs to be drawn closer to God. And the other person might need to engage much more fully in helping the process. So let's, let's always keep that in mind. And, and I appreciate one more thought, and that's examine ourselves. It's been mentioned, I think, maybe by both brothers. We need to examine ourselves here. Do we have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ that changes the way we do business everywhere, especially with, with our mates? Is that, is that what's driving us when we make our decisions? We need to examine ourselves. And not to, not to be condemned, but to, but to be, examine ourselves to say, Lord, I, I see a need, but I believe you are changing me. I believe you, are, you, you, have, show, you have shown me yourself in a way that's going to help change me. That's, that's my prayer. I'm gonna be, I want that for me, and I, I want it for everybody. Because not just, not just that I can say we all got it. Our God is worthy. He died for me. I know that. And, I'm not, and I know that he has made an influence. And I know that he can for, for all of us. I just, I just wanted to just get up for a moment and just say that amen to what's been come forth. And uh, this kind of a service is because the need is great, but God is greater. Praise God.